you have undoubtedly heard about them, either as a motorsport enthusiast, a jewelry connoisseur, or of course, a watch lover. Today, we have the pleasure to be invited by one of the last family-owned watch companies, and we will enjoy their rich history in their museum. Furthermore, talk about watches. For this special occasion, I'm wearing this incredible 1860 with Selman dial, obviously with its well-decorated Guilloche dial in white gold. Please follow me as we shoot the portrait of today's brand, Chopard. Welcome to Chopar. I'm here with my friend Juan, who is a watch specialist and happens to be the director of Patrimony at Chopar. It's time to check out their museum and I'm so looking forward to this. Off to you, sir. So, welcome to the museum. Merci. We're going to go upstairs to these beautiful staircases. So, here we are in the most modern uh, building of the facility. So we redid the museum. And but the museum isn't publicly accessible, right? No, it's really under uh, invitation and always approved uh, by the family. When was Chopard founded? In 1860. I see. And the Chauvillet family took over at what year? Uh, 1963. And for now it's still one of the very few family-owned watch companies, correct? Yes. Incredible. So here we have the watchmaker desk of Paul André Chopard. The so, his desk? Yes. The original desk of him? Yes. So Mr. Chopard, third generation, who sold the company to Mr. Schäufele. And opposite, we have Mr. Schäufele Sr.'s Goldschmidt no way. Uh, desk. So it was really clever to say before Jasper that we actually combined the savoir-faire from the Germans, but also the Swiss watchmaking. This is also why we have this legitimacy today to be a watchmaker, but as well a jeweler. Incredible, incredible. I think this really stands for what Chopar is as well, right? Yes. This is so cool to see. I think we're on to a very important hallmark why a lot of people might know Chopard, the combination of their jewelry as well as their watchmaking comes together, I believe, historically in the Happy Diamonds, correct? So the Happy Diamonds are actually diamonds that are free uh, on a dial. This is why the word happy. And this vitrine really shows the first international success of the brand with its Happy Diamonds watch. This one, you had the upper compartment that you could hide the diamonds. And then if you press the button, Incredible. it just goes down. The Happy Diamonds first saw light in mid-70s, but in up 76. until today, it is still very much appreciated. And I think one of the most beloved models within Chopard, but I believe more feminine today, right? Of course, it's exclusively on feminine collections. We had, we had actually a 40-year patent, but in Switzerland, a patent uh, only lasts for 40 years. Okay. So basically, we cannot extend it, but we really dominate this technology. And as you mentioned, it's so recognizable to us that it's actually part of our DNA. But already I see here a Grand Prix of Monaco and a race car on the dial. Exactly. And we're talking about 1980, correct? Yes. Thank you for showing me around in this uh, exquisite museum, Juan. Really appreciate it. But I want to see some watches from up close. But first, I'm thirsty for a drink. Of course. Let's first start with a model that kind of sparked my enthusiasm for Chopard back when you invited me in the boutique after you reintroduced the Saint Moritz as the Alpine Eagle. But this is the original one, right? This is the original Saint Moritz from 
1980. So integrated bracelet, 35 millimeters with dates. And today we did a reinterpretation of this beautiful watch. And I do think that this kind of watches like the 70s, 80s era, a little bit Gerald Genta kind of vibes, are really catching on at this moment, right? Of course, this is the new tendency, the new sport chic. Yeah. So really high-end watches that you can wear on a more uh, informal occasion. And when we take a look at the reintroduced one, do you see it catching on as, as fast as you hoped? Well, it's really hard to predict uh, a success, but uh, in the 80s, we were also uh, kind of doubting if it was the right move, and we actually were right. And with this uh, relaunch, I think what's really important to know is the storytelling with three generations that work together for, for this project. The first one that caught my eye is this watch that has also been previously posted by Odinki, right? Correct. So here you have uh, one of very, very few rarest examples of Chopin wristwatches before the Schäufele family took over. So this present watch is from 1960, features a Landron calibre 149, and you have this beautiful, uh, very vintage pushers. Love the pump pushers. And also the, the bone, LUC logo on the dial. You don't use the bone logo anymore, do you? We use it in our tourbillon uh, bridges for very high-end pieces. So it's reserved now for very special uh, examples. Exactly. Very nice. But most likely the watch most people know that are into uh, cars or auto sport has to be the Mille Miglia. Right and there. I'm excited to actually handle the very first Mille Miglia that ever saw the light of day. Correct. This is a piece from 1988. It was our first Mille Miglia reference. It was also back then the smallest quartz uh, mono pusher chronograph in the market. It's 31 millimeter? Or? It's 32 millimeters, so quite small. But still, we have tritium uh, luminescent uh, indexes on the dial. It's so cool to have also the millimiglia on the bezel, on top of the bezel in red, displaying the real sporty side of this watch. Now, if we take a look at the more higher complicated watches, uh, the first thing that uh, sparkled my attention, obviously, because it has a lot of gemstones in it, is this uh, tourbillon. Well, it's not uh, a simple tourbillon, it's actually a flying tourbillon. So you can see there is no bridge uh, holding uh, the front part of the tourbillon. It's also a beautiful sapphire baguette setting, not only on the dial, but also on the bezel, on the whole case, the briolet on the, on the crown, on the buckle, and also on the inner part of the case on the back. So the movement is a micro rotor flying tourbillon yes. which isn't even the most impressive part because this diamonds of the sapphire setting of this watch is remarkable yeah this is a caliber based on what we are both wearing today the legendary uh, 96 obviously the beautiful micro rotor and yeah this is a very uh, special piece only limited to three worldwide Three pieces of these Three watch pieces. ever have been yes. produced. Incredible. We have two more limited editions laying in front of us. Um, I'm interested to see this watch because of the color of the case. It's like titanium kind of color. What, what is the case made of? Well, uh, obviously it's light, so it also seems titanium, but it's actually uh, steel that was carburized, uh, cemented steel. So basically it's a steel that has a much more resistance on scratch. Okay. Uh, it has this matte finishing that gives a bit of a, let's say, maybe military tool watch. But at the same time, we have one of the most appreciated complications in high watchmaking, 
which is a minute repeater. Oh, don't tell me this is a minute repeater. I love those. I love the sound of it. Well, this sound is crystal clear. I... That brings tears to my eyes. Incredible piece. Um, however, there's one watch I'm uh, definitely missing here, which is the watch I uh, enjoy myself the most, which is the watch on my wrist. Can we see some uh, 1860s? Please, we have a very special room that pays tribute for this watch, so let's go on downstairs. I'm happy to see that one. So I still have my gloves on. I still am wearing my watch. So I guess there's one more room we got to visit. This is the room. So this is the 1860 room. <laughs> Very nice. This is one of the watches that I really love about your power. For me, it's the epitome of a dress watch. Uh, I'm so happy to see one in yellow gold because... This is actually pink gold. It's pink gold? Yes, it's a 4N uh, pink gold. So that's also your own uh, alloy of gold, right? Well, uh, we cannot uh, deliver exactly the component of this alloy, but yes, it's our own uh, formula. Can I see the watch? Please. What I really think is fantastic about this watch, it's the guillotine style, the layout of the dial itself, so the date below the decentral seconds at the six o'clock position. It really reminds me of uh, Philippe Dufour kind of dials. Well, actually, this watch was introduced to the public in 1997. Okay. Uh, and Philippe Dufour's simplicity was in uh, the 2000. So this watch is even earlier? Correct. Incredible. And the steel one you have over there, it's an 1862? Well, this is probably the uh, 1860. Not in terms of case, but this is the first prototype uh, of the legendary 196 micro rotor caliber. Wow. That we are now going to contemplate uh, with the help of Johan, who's going to open uh, the back case and you can see the very first prototype of this caliber. But there's a caliber 96 in two. Here, yes. And does it already have the micro rotor and swan neck regulator? Yes, correct. Let's open it up. <laughs> Let's open it up. so much for the hospitality. I really enjoyed seeing your heritage and learning more about the brand. Now I can appreciate my 1860 even more, uh, but I heard Mr. Schoeffler also enjoys a nice glass of wine. So I hope to see him and you tonight uh, at the restaurant to uh, enjoy this beautiful day in the end. Well, thank you, Jasper. To be honest, all the pleasure and honor was from us uh, to be able to host you. Uh, because I know you also travel from far away and again, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs> As mentioned before, the Schäufele family enjoys life. Not only watches, but a good glass of wine. It's much appreciated by them. We're about to meet up with the youngest generation of the family, the youngest Mr. Schäufele, for a nice glass of wine and an excellent dinner. Please follow us to their restaurant. One day I'll have this in my home. Thank you so much for watching this video. We are enjoying a beautiful dinner here and obviously beautiful wines. I'm here with the youngest generation of the Schäufele family and I would like to say Sante. Cheers. Sante.